Okay, let's look at a couple of questions on patterns from past exam papers. Okay, let's look at this example from the Eastern Cape in 2018. Well, they've given us this, this pattern in pictures. And so what we have um, here, let's just look at the pattern. It's got like a little central square and then a I mean, rectangle and then four little rectangles around the outside. And then for the next one, you've still got that, but what have they done? In addition to that, they've popped on another four rectangles around the outside. And you can see then in the third one, what they've done is they've popped on another four rectangles around the outside. So it's quite easy to notice that what you're doing each time is you're just adding on four rectangles. And now they ask us, to the first thing they ask us to give is um, how many rectangles you will have in shape four. And they've helpfully told us that in one there are five, in two there are nine, in three there are 13. And so in shape four, we know that there will be 13 plus four, which is 17 rectangles. So that's our first answer. The next thing they ask us is they want to know if I'm at um, if I've got 101 rectangles, what shape am I at? Now, actually, I'm going to pause on answering that, and I'm first going to answer this one, and then I will come back to that. So this question asks me to find the general rule, and I have a way of doing that when I know what's happening is that I'm adding on four each time. And if you remember, what I've done always is to say, right, I drop a little table and I know shape one is five, two is nine, three is 13, and I've noticed that I'm adding on four each time. So I know that my formula for how many shapes there are is gonna have something to do with four n because we're there's four lots being added each time. If the formula was just four n, then when n is one, right, the number of shapes is one, you'd have four, when n is 2, you'd have 8. When n is 3, you'd have 12. And when n is 4, you'd have 16. But that isn't what we wanted, right? When n is 1, we wanted 5. When n is 8, when n is 2, we wanted 9. When n is 3, we wanted 13. When n is 4, we wanted 17. So what do we have to do to correct this line to get to that line? Well, hopefully, you can easily see that all we need to do to correct it is to add on one. And then we will get five, nine, 13, 17, as we wanted. So what we have here is our answer to 3.1.2, that the general term of this pattern is given by the formula 4n plus one. Now I'm going to go back to solving this because this one asked me, when I have 101 rectangles, what is my shape number? Now remember, your shape number is given by the n and the number of rectangles you need is given by this formula 4n plus 1. So if we want to know when do we have 101 rectangles, we're going to have to solve when is 4n plus 1 equal to 101. And that is an easy equation to solve. We're going to end up with n is equal to 25. So it'll be shape number 25 that has 101 rectangles. Okay, and then let's just quickly finish off 3.1.3, which is in fact a very similar question. It says which shape will have 205 rectangles? Well, it's the same process. 205 is equal to 4n plus 1 because 205 is the number of rectangles and this formula is what gives us the number of rectangles and we asked which shape so we want to get the n. So we just solve this equation and we'll get 204 is equal to 4n. Divide both sides of the equation by 4 and we will get that n is equal to 50. One. Okay, the very next question in this um, exam was this one, pattern 2, 5, 10, 17, and you were asked to find the general term and then the tenth term. So we explore and we see, well, are we adding on the same thing each time? Well, 
let's add three, here's add five. So no, we're not adding on the same thing each time. Are we multiplying by the same thing each time? Well, here from two to five, you're multiplying by two and a half to get there. But from five to 10, you're multiplying by two. So you're not multiplying by the same thing each time. So we've not got one of those nice basic patterns where we add the same things each time or we multiply by the same thing each time. So we've got to consider our other types of patterns. So one of the other types of patterns we've looked at is where they're related to the squares or the cubes. So let's try that out. So what I've just done is a little sort of table here. This is term one, term two. Yeah, this is term one, term two, term three, term four. And I'm going to check how do they compare to n squared. So when I have term n equals one, it'll be one squared, which is one. When n is 2, 2 squared, which is 4. When n is 3, n, 3 squared, which is 9. When n is 4, you'll get 4 squared, which is 16. So how does your term relate to these? Well, hopefully you can very easily see that really all you've done to get to your term is add on 1 to the n squared. And so that tells me that when I get to term number n, it's just got to be one more than the n squared. And so my answer here is that the formula for Tn is n squared plus one. And then it's very easy after that to get the 10th term. It's just going to be 10 squared plus one and 10 squared is 100. And so 101 is the answer here.